Okay, Audu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Wa alaikum assalam, Kusum Fatima. Wa alaikum assalam, Tahir Raza. Welcome to lesson number 10, book 5. And I'm your teacher, Mrs. Benazir Hussain. Let's start our lesson. Okay, as you all know, you turn your mic off. Wa alaikum salam, Maryam Batul. And you put your mics to mute, please. We will wait for a couple of minutes and I think we will go through our um, usual stuff like class rules and resources. And by, th by the time, if anybody wants to join us and they are running late, then they can be able to join us, okay? Let me read what the other students are saying. Um, okay, Iram Jaffrey um, saying salam wa alaikum as salam. Barisham Zaidi said salam wa alaikum as salam. Thank you. So, okay, let's start. <coughs> Excuse me. As usual, we start a lesson with the dua with the intention, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me tawfiq to make my lesson easier for you to understand and for give you tawfiq so you can understand my lesson much, much easier, okay? And what I want to teach you today, you will learn. And that's my objective done. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi zidni ilma. My Lord, increase me in my knowledge. Okay. Yes. Today is uh, we come back on a clock and history lessons. Today I pick up uh, a clock. Uh, topic is cleansiness, and the very famous story of Quran is the story of Janabi uh, Musa al Islam, or you can say Prophet Moses al Islam. So, inshallah. Uh, I hope you will enjoy the lesson today and we will learn something new. So let's do class rules. I hope you like the picture. I changed the picture there to make a little bit more colorful. So be punctual. Alhamdulillah, as you always, you, will, you are on time. Attend the lesson every Friday. Alhamdulillah, you do. Listen to the class teacher, you do. All people must don't have mics on meet unless you have a question. Of course, we all abide by rules, apart from me, because I have to talk. If you have any questions, please use the chat box. Okay. Okay. Sequence of the lesson, starter. Recap of the lesson. In history, we will learn uh, Prophet Moses alayhi salam or Prophet Musa alayhi salam, you can say akhlaq, we will learn cleansiness. Learning objective. After today's lesson, you should be able to answer these four learning objectives confidently. I will understand the true meaning of cleansiness. I will know why cleansiness is important in Islam. I will learn brief story of Prophet Moses alayhi salam. And by the end of the lesson, I will understand chronological events of the um, Moses al Islam's life. What is a chronological event? Can anybody answer for me? What do you understand by chronological event? Let's see what the students say. <coughs> well done. In order, yeah. In the events in order, um, in order the way they happen. For example, what happened in someone's life at the, when they are child and then when they are, um, in, not in a life in any, anything. Chronological order means in a sequence. It, it should be in a sequence. It should be in order what the way, the, the, the way it's happened, okay? So it uh, means you all get the gist of it. So um, I don't need to give you English uh, definition of the chronological mean. Okay then. 
excuse me, I've just got a little bit cough today, a Qayyad worksheet, okay? I hope you all done your Qayyad worksheet for what purpose did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create us? How is the day of judgment example of Allah? I don't think so there you should be have any problem in that. Again, uh, we have a fiqh worksheet in the matter of Islam leave, we must obey the rulings of the experts of the law. These experts are called uh, mushtahid. Right, again, last week, uh, because we were rushing in the end when you were posing the questions and questions on me, let me explain you again as something very, uh, very, very um, simple. In Islam, especially the Shia school of thought, it's a wajib, okay? It's not recommended, it's a mandatory action on us to be in taqlid of someone. However, some people uh, out there who doesn't believe that. But as a 12th Shia, uh, tw uh, sorry, 12th Shia, like the follower of Ahlul Bayt and school of thought, it's wajib on us to be in taqlid of someone. Who we are taqlidin, that's differ, right? People go with different uh, merger. Again, somebody asked me a question last week and they said, oh, it's the tattoos in Islam, right? And it becomes a little bit, um, I, I rushed into the answer. For example, she asked me the question, what I've said, what I know. I said, as far I know, it's makhru, but it's not haram. And again, I'm not a qualified a merger of taqlid or I'm not qualified in taqlid to say which merger is wrong or which merger is right, okay? I am myself muqallid of one of the ayatullah. So if you have a question specific about something, you should reju, you should contact your own merger and ask them what is the answer of that question, okay? However, as a madrasa teacher, I'm teaching you the content of taqlid. What is taqlid according to Shia and what and who become a mushtahid? That was my topic. Apart from the who, which merger is wrong or which merger is right, I'm not in a position or qualified to reply you this. I hope I cleared um, my answer um, completely today. <clears throat> okay, so. Akhlaq, cleansiness. Okay, what do we understand? Uh, okay, well done, uh, well done, Kulsum. Akhlaq, cleansiness. What do we understand by cleansiness? If somebody say clean or cleansiness, what do we do understand? Simple, the like, for example, Cleansiness means to clean ourselves, to make sure we are not, uh, we, we are clean, like out physically clean, okay? But in Islam, gives us different perspective about cleansiness, okay? What do I mean by this? I will go through a little bit more on my next slide. Let me just read a couple of the chats, questions. Okay. Maryam Batul said, stay pure. Of course, that's another one meaning. Kulsum Fatima said, to be refrained from impure and the bad. Well done, Kulsum Fatima. Uh, very, very good. Tahir Raza said, pure. Maryam Batul again said, spiritually clean and pure. You all have a gist of what the cleansiness is, okay? Now, what we're going to do, we will, as our lesson is going forward, we will learn a little bit more about cleansiness, okay? Okay. <clears throat> so, cleansiness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, for God loves those who turn to him constantly, and he loves those who keep themselves pure and clean. Simple. I hope we all understood what this, this ayah uh, referring to. In Islam, it is often emphasized that we should remain clean and in a state of purity, tahara in Arabic. Okay, then next paragraph is we should think about cleansiness, 
not as something that we do or not do, but as something that should be part of us. Keeping clean does not only include the physical self, but also the spiritual. People, uh, Prophet uh, Muhammad peace be upon him said, cleansiness and purity are of the are part of the faith. If you realize, I put a little picture there, but it says cleansiness is a part of our faith. And that saying is from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And the another picture I put, it says, Wallahu yuhibbul mutahareen. Allah Ta'ala loves those who keep themselves pure and uh, clean. Okay. So these two pictures, I put it intentionally because one is from Quran and one is from uh, Prophet Sadiz. So cleansiness, we all know what is the cleansiness mean, right? The story in your books is, I just, probably some of you didn't have the book, so let me just quickly go uh, through the story. So one day a man came to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, and he said he wants to meet him. The prophet uh, said to his servant or whoever came to inform Prophet uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, somebody came to see you. Then Prophet said, make him sit down, I'll come in a minute. Then Prophet, uh, a prophet took his time to groom himself. Okay, he combed his beard, he combed his hair. And that time he probably washed his face means he looked presentable. And then he came out and uh, that time it says some of the uh, narration says the people look because the mirrors was not invented that much they were invented but not uh, in arabia that uh, there was no mirror type thing so what they do they get the ball of the water and they see the reflection in the water okay that's the another kind of um uh, mirror, mirror for them to so to see how they look the holy the holy prophet came out and he, the holy prophet said he, one of his wives said oh prophet um you know someone's waiting for you outside um and you take in a little bit time to groom yourself and then prophet's reply was very beautiful he said and he said God Almighty liked to see a believer groom and prepare himself before meeting his Muslim brother. And that comes, that quote we can apply on the women as well. For example, uh, one of your friend, female friend comes to your house, then you should groom yourself to be presentable. Basically, what we're trying to say is when somebody comes to see you or you go and see someone, you make sure you look presentable, yeah? Imagine one of your friend came to your house and her hair or his hair is scruffy. He's, uh, uh, Kulsum Fatima said, my teacher told me this story and I really liked it. Yeah, mashallah. Every story of prophets and Ahlul Bayt gives us a lesson. Right, let me come back to my point. For example, just say, your teacher, your teacher, sorry, your uh, friend comes to your house and his or her clothes are dirty. They have dirt on, 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 his, on her clothes and the hair is scurfy, right? Will you be feeling comfortable sit next to the person no you know she or he is your friend but you still feel like mm, you know you should clean yourself you're probably thinking in your head you you not telling probably the friend but in in your head you were thinking you should be a little bit more presentable so that's why prophet muhammad peace be upon him said make sure you are clean and you are presentable to other fellow muslim brother or sister allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, surah number two and verse number 222 for god loves those who turn to him constantly and he loves those who keep themselves pure and clean which one uh, i just put it on in Islam, it is often emphasized that we should remain clean and in a state of purity. Yes, right. For example, we live in a Muslim, we live in a country where the majority of 
the people doesn't use water to clean themselves after goes to the toilet okay and it is makhru while you are means obviously that's for boys not for girls but let me just say it it's makhru when you urinate you are standing so because what the reason is because the droplets of the urine can go everywhere or your clothes or your feet or you know and then your that part of the body become nudges daily bath we should have daily bath if it's possible if it's not then at least we we encourage ourselves <laughs> friday but thank you sakib you by mistake turned your mic on washing face and brushing teeth right why not if we wash our face and brushing our teeth every day that is a cl physical cleansiness and while eating one of the hadith is says is that islam recommended wash your hands before and after meal not just before after meal as well is recommended and that's bring baraka right this is a physical cleansiness right and i'm sure you read your chapters and you understand or you all understand what is the physical cleansiness is and i'm sure you all are well well presentable when you go out and uh, you, you look after yourself but usually people forget about their spiritual cleansiness we will go through the spiritual cleansiness in next slide but i have got little quiz for you right look at that pictures i hope you like those pictures here are some examples of cleansiness can you guess what cleansiness are they okay the first one uh let's see come on chat somebody replied shower type somebody says yeah shower type what is the second one then washing face well done number three brushing teeth that's three are the physical cleansiness okay now this one is wadu this one is salah well done well done to barisham zaidi mariam batul tahir raza barisham zaidi kusum fatma thank you for participating uh, in this little quiz it's just the little pictures to remind you what kind of cleansiness are, are they okay we already talk about physical cleanliness like i said i'm very very sure you all look after yourself and do take care of your physical cleanliness and um, yes when we are children i sometime we forget to take the water yes in the toilet that's the only big problem in the children but i'm sure you all do so so please 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 take the water in the toilet because this is important in islam right now we will talk about spiritual cleansiness spiritual cleansiness is for example wudu what is wudu when it keeps us clean and purify our souls it refreshes us and helps us concentrate and think clearly even simple acts like tell me let me tell you a story about someone especially in my class in year 5 where i teach you know in in the, the madrasa i teach i i teach a boy um and the boy he was very close to me like is is very very um close family friend son so the boy has a habit and he always always lie it's not like a big lies or trying to put someone in trouble but he lies like little little lies and then the, he was so naive he he caught out straight away he came to me and i said miss i want help and i said what kind of help and he said miss i don't want to lie but i do lie and that is my problem what i do and you know what i said to him i said to him i said do me a favor every day in the morning you do wudu 
and in the night before you go to your bed, you do voodoo. As the voodoo will keep you spiritually clean. Because Imam Ali Salam said, when you do commit a sin, your soul is like a plain white paper. Every time you commit a sin, either is a small or is a big, that dot gets put on your soul. And imagine if we commit us one sin a day, that the soul has just just say in a one year 365 small dots. And thus Imam Ali says, then your your soul becomes so crooked and so black, then you forgot how to distinguish between truth and false. And that's why you, this becomes normal for you to commit a sin. Okay, if your soul is pure, so when you do commit a sin or lie, you're thinking, mm, I shouldn't lie because I'm displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I, I'm not gaining anything out of it. Actually, I am. I am committing a, uh, committing a sin and I am getting, I'm going to get punishment, right? So, we are in the state where we distinguish. Distinguish means we can spot a difference between haq and batil. Distinguish means in English is when you spot difference between two, three things, okay? So, I said to the boy, I said, what I want you to do is, Ali, I would like to you do, do wudu in the morning and do wudu in the night. And I said, I would like you to do one more thing. And he said, what miss? And I said, I would like you to do is every morning when you wake up, say salam to your imam of your time. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, when you say salam, to say salam to someone is no wajib, is it? But a reply of salam is wajib. So when I am saying salam to your Imam Mehdi, Kulsum Fatima said she does it every day, well done Kulsum. So when I am saying Ya Imam of my time, Assalamu Alaikum, yes, I've done recommended act, it's not wajib on me, and I'm sure the who are the flag barrier of islam like imam mehdi he knows what is wajib he will say to me inshallah wa alaikum assalam benazir yeah so he will reply back to me because my imam knows what well, reply of the salam is wajib so i said to ali and i said ali when you say, you say salam to Imam every day in the morning, and it takes two minutes to do Dua Farj. And I said, read Dua Farj. And I said, then after reading Dua Farj, say to your Imam and say, Oh, my Imam, I ask you to help me to be a good Muslim. I ask you to help me to have a good day today. And I said, tell him your weaknesses. Tell him, Oh, Imam, I wanted to be good. But my soul becomes so weak whenever shaitan whispers is in my ear, I just lied. Right? Remember what we learned when we were learning about uh, Prophet Adam's story. Shaitan said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, I will try to astray your, your believers, O Allah. I will whisper in their ears. Yes? When we do something bad, that's shaitan whispering in our ears. What, what, what Allah said, Allah said, go, do what you like to do. Because the true believers of mine, they will not get astray. Okay? And why Imam is of our time is helping me? How he will help me? I said to Ali, whenever you want to lie, your Imam will whisper in your ear as well. And he will tell you, Ali, don't lie because you will not gonna get benefit of after lying. Actually, you will put yourself in more trouble. Be truthful because Allah loves those who are truthful. So my dear students, what I am trying to tell you here is, yes, we all have weaknesses. We all have 
strengths. I know my weaknesses, you know your weaknesses. Don't let your weaknesses to make your soul unclean by committing small sins. Imam Ali salam said, don't count or don't look at the sins and see how small are they. Look at the person who you are disobeying. I shouldn't say person. I mean, look who you are disobeying because Allah is not a person. Allah is a God. We are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear students, we understood what is a physical cleansiness is, but this is very important. We usually forget about spiritual cleansiness when we backbite, when we lie, when we try to cheat in small games. Yes, that's why I always tell in my class, in my madrasa, don't even bother to do small cheatings, even though in joke, because once you start doing small sins, they become normal for you and that be, they become your be, become your habits and then you in one point comes in your life when you just forget how to distinguish between true and false okay so i hope we understood what is the cleansiness mean what is the true meaning of cleansiness not just physically clean but spiritually clean as well because what is the point me having sparkling white clothes on groomed my hair put nice clothes on nice scarf on nice abaya on when i am spiritually unclean is that's why it's very important for us to make sure we physically clean so people doesn't get grahiyat from us like for example they don't feel disgust from us and we are presentable because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to a believing muslim and man <coughs> men and women should be presentable and that's my prophet said as well however i need to make sure uh, uh, with uh, my uh, sorry i need to make sure i will be spiritually clean as well so when i go to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after death in uh, on the day of judgment my my ruh my soul is physically uh, spiritually clean and there is no diseases like backbiting lying being sly or hurtful to others okay i hope I did make sense and I hope you understood what I'm trying to tell you here. Okay, worksheet 7.1 in Akhlaq, please try to do so. It's a very small worksheet, it's only four questions. How are we supposed to keep our souls clean? Like I explained to you to get away from ourselves from sins like backbiting lying and hurting someone mention three specific areas with special attention should be given to cleansiness right again these three areas you should look into what kind of you can give three specific areas about your physical cleansiness and three specific area about your um spiritual cleansiness and there is a filling the blanks and write down what you should do every day in order to remain clean and pure. Very simple. Now, I have got challenge for those who like challenges. The challenge is write one paragraph about spiritual cleansiness, explaining everything clearly. Okay, so this is my challenge. So please try to write a paragraph on that cleansiness. Now, we come to the story time. In history, I chose <coughs> story of Prophet Moses because he is the very, very famous prophet. <laughs> so Sim Fatima says, yay, yeah, stories, yeah. So this is in your curriculum, so I'm not getting anything extra out. Right, now, stories. 
of history of Prophet Moses al-Islam. I tell you one thing, uh, interesting. If before lockdown, me and my class decided to do um, the play, um, theater play on Prophet Moses al-Islam, but unfortunately, because of lockdown, it stopped. So inshallah next year. <coughs> so, Prophet Moses Al-Islam, several centuries after Prophet Yusuf Al-Islam. Remember the Prophet Yusuf Al-Islam, where he was uh, raised, where he became the finance, finance minister in Egypt. So after many centuries after Prophet Yusuf Al-Islam, Prophet Yusuf Al-Islam died and then people stopped believing in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then a cruel man by the name of Piron came to power in Egypt. And he was very, very cruel, very arrogant, and he thinks he's the God. And he asked his people to believe him as God. During his time, the tribe of Bani Israel had grown and was still increasing in population. So Bani Israel was the tribe of Prophet Moses Al-Islam. But Firon feared that the tribe of Bani Israel might overthrow him. So he decided to make life difficult for them by making them his slaves. So what happened was Bani Israel is the name of the tribe who lives in that area where Firon lives. Um, and the Firon was the king of that time, but the Bani Israel was the very poor people. They haven't, so they worked for um, Firon. But what Firon did, because Bani Israel was keep growing in numbers, that they that numbers in pop, the, of the population is getting increased every year. So what happened is the Firon thinking, mm, because they are getting bigger and bigger tribe. One day they probably throw me out of my throne. So what he did is he took granted, who took advantage of their poverty and make them in slaves, make, uh, make them slaves. And those Bani Israel's people worked for uh, Firon because if they don't work for Firon, where are they gonna get income from? So that's, that's the way the slavery starts. So one day, Firon was warned by his royal uh, astrologer. He said to Firon, he said, you know, in this Bani Israel tribe, one child will be born and he will kill you. He will be the cause of your destruction. He will be the cause of your end, you know? And then Firon got really, really scared. And he thought, I will never, never ever get this, let this happen. What he did is, he said, when the, the male child will born, they said in next few years. So what Firon did is, Firon ordered his soldier, and then he said, every pregnant woman you see, once they deliver a child, kill. If it's a male, kill the boy. If it's a female, let, let her go because the astrologer said the male born <coughs> excuse me so they started killing the male child and some narration said he was able to kill in about seven years about seventy thousand children some narration says but allah is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Remember when we were doing Asma al-Husna, he's al-Qabir, he's most powerful, he's great. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah 3, verse 54, they plan and Allah plans, and surely Allah is the best of planners. What Allah did, Allah made janab Musa's mom's pregnancy hidden. What do I mean by this? So, <coughs> excuse me, Musa's soldier, what they are looking for? They are looking for the pregnant ladies. 
when Janabe Musa's mother became pregnant, she was not showing the sign of pregnancy. What do I mean by this? Probably if you are an older sibling, and then if you have a younger sibling, you probably remember when your mothers became pregnant, that tummy got a little bit bigger because that's why, that's the mechanism Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made in female's body. The child grows inside the tummy. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made Janabi Musa alayhi salam's mother pregnant, she didn't show that, subhanallah. So she looks like her tummy looks flat. So when the soldiers was looking for the pregnant women, they look at the Prophet Moses alayhi salam's mother and they thought, she's, she's not pregnant, she's normal. But when the time of delivery came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Prophet Moses alayhi salam's mother to deliver, after delivering the baby, put in his Moses basket and threw, um, not three, and put it in a river, river Nile. And now Prophet, you know, for a mother is a little bit, not sure I'm gonna put my newborn baby in the basket just on the mercy of river. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Prophet Moses' mother, he said, don't you worry, we will look after this baby. And surely he did. And at that river, Nile was flowing by the side of Firon's castle. Asia was the beloved wife of uh, Firon, but she, she hasn't had any child. So when she was sitting with her servants next to the Nile, she saw a Moses basket flowing in the river. She she went to the basket and she, when she oh, uh, had the blanket off, she saw a child and she, she was pleased with it. And she thought, this is the... Zainab Abbas said, uh, sorry, I'm late, miss. It's okay. Uh, you can catch up my lesson plan on YouTube if you want to. So what happened then? The Prophet Moses, alayhi salam, picked up by Asiya. Janabi Asiya alayhi salam and Janabi Asiya start raising him as, as her own child. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Prophet Asiya to raise Prophet Moses alayhi salam because Janabi Asiya was the one of the pure, pure ladies. She is the one of the four great ladies mentioned in the Quran. And there is a lot of incident. There is a lot of incidents I can explain, but I'm afraid I'm just worrying about the time. So Janabi Moses alayhi salam grew up in Prophet uh, in Firon's castle, and Firon has doubts there and then and thinking where this child comes from. But Janabi Asiya alayhi salam always calmed him down and said, "Look." You always killed a male-born child. There is not a bunny Israel child. That's probably someone uh, somewhere else. How could be your you have great soldiers in your army? How could they, those soldiers uh, didn't spot any lady with pregnancy? It can't be. So the Firon, because Allah want him to believe, so he believed. Then Janabi Musa al Islam grew up in Firon's castle. But Janabi Musa alayhi salam is always is the is a believer in his side. He never thought, he never thought Firon is a god. He saw Firon soldiers torturing Israel, Israelites, Bani Israel's people. So one day when the Janabi Musa, Musa, Musa alayhi salam was passing by, he saw Israel. Uh, but one of the Firon soldiers was hitting an old Bani Israel's man. And Janabe, Firon, Janabe Musa al Islam was quite big uh, man, big Muslim man. So he stuck the soldier, but he, because he's, he wasn't not listening to Janabe Musa al Islam, punched him. And because 
Janabi Musa al -Islam punched him, he died. And now Janabi Musa al -Islam is thinking, Fron's gonna get angry at me because I killed one of his soldier. And he knew his, his, his adopted son. So Janabi Musa al -Islam left the Egypt. And he keep, he keep going in one direction. That's the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned for him. But he, he went and he saw, he met a tribe very far away. His name, that was a, another prophet called Prophet Shuaib who lived in the same time as Prophet Moses alayhi salam. And he has two daughters. One of the daughters became wife of Prophet Moses alayhi salam. And he spent eight or 10 years in that area and then 10 years and then one day prophet moses al -Islam decided to go back to egypt he said probably now firon's calm down i should go back to egypt and see how the situation is and i should take my family now prophet moses al -Islam took his family back to egypt when they were traveling, because that time you have to travel on horses or donkeys or camels, and it takes days and nights. It's a quite lengthy journey. So Janabi Moses alayhi salam, one night he were, they were they were having a shelter near the mountain and they were lying down. But Janabi Moses realized something. It was very cold night as well, and they need some fire. So Janabi Moses alayhi salam look at the mountain and he saw a fire on the mountain so he thought somebody else was there who has fire so why i don't go up there and ask that man to give me a little bit of wood fire so i'll bring that down and make my family warm as well then janabi moses alayhi salam, and the mountain was mount of sinai so janabi moses alayhi salam, went up to the mountain and when he went up to the mountain he what he saw he saw a burning bush And then from the burning bush, a voice came. The voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Oh Musa, I am your Lord. Take off your shoes. You are standing on holy ground. Prophet Moses alayhi salam instantly obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Janabi Moses alayhi salam a staff, a stick, you know. And then that staff became a big snake. And the Prophet Moses alayhi salam was scared, you know. When you see someone talking to you, you are in shock already. And you see a staff become a snake, you're scared. So he hesitant. He wasn't scared, but he was hesitant. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Janabi Moses alayhi salam, pick up the staff again. And when Janabi Moses alayhi salam obeyed Allah's command and start picking up the staff, that become, um, the, start to picking up the snake, that becomes staff again. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoken to Prophet Moses alayhi salam, what, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him prophet and what is the reason for him. Uh, to be a prophet and what message he needs to deliver. Prophet Moses alayhi salam is one of the Ulul Azm prophet. So Janabi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Janabi Musa to go back to Egypt and tell Firon to stop oppressing people and start believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Janabi Musa alayhi salam came down and went to Egypt to warn Firon about Allah's power. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a mission as well to free Bani Israel. Who are the Bani Israel? Bani Israel, the people of Egypt, the, the slave people, and Janabi Musa alayhi salam was the one of the Bani Israel. When Prophet Musa arrived in Egypt, he went to his brother, he, who was his brother? Harun alayhi salam. Janabi Harun alayhi salam was his brother. And they both went to Prophet 
uh, sorry, they both went to Firon's castle and tried to warn him and tried to tell him not to oppress Bani Israel and refrain his evil acts and believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Firon was an arrogant person. He didn't. He was, he was said, no, I won't believe in you and I, I don't believe in your stories. And it's a very small, I'm going to briefly tell you what happened there. And there was some magicians who were, who were, who, the, who were there in, in Firon's castle to show Firon um, magic tricks. So Janabi Musa salam, threw his staff on the ground and the staff became a big snake. And then Firon said, oh, you done a trick. So he ordered his magicians and said, you threw your snakes as well. So they threw that stuff and they became snake as well. But that was illusion. That wasn't real. But Janabi Musa's stuff became snake. That was real because of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Janabi Musa's stuff eaten all the other snake. The magicians had brain, I would say, because they knew they were lying, they were playing illusion. So they, they bow down in the sajda and said, Oh Musa, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know we can do trick. We can play a trick on people. But what you done, that's impossible. That only happens if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you power to do so. So they bow down in the sajda and believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But... Firon didn't, then, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed a lot of number of miracles, you would say, or to Firon, but he didn't. For example, there is a very famous 10 plagues of Egypt. When the waters turn into blood, Firon looked at the whole Nile river became uh, blood water but Firon didn't understood frogs a lot of hundreds of thousands of frogs came into Egypt from somewhere and ruined the crops and fields and the people's properties then gnats then flies then disease of livestock suddenly livestock of of the Egypt what happened to them? They start dying. Unhealable boils. You know, Egyptian, you probably learn in your history uh, in school as well, the Egyptians were very, very advanced in uh, medicine that time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the plague to the Egyptian people, not Bani Israel, just Egyptian people, unhealable boils. Nobody can cure them. Then, Fire came from the sky. Locusts came and ruined the fields again. That darkness, the death of firstborn. And then remember what Firon did. Firon killed every bone male for seven years. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the last plague when your firstborn died. So my dear students, these 10 plagues came to the Egypt, but Firon was so arrogant and he thinks he is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't listen to, he didn't pay heed. He didn't, he didn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day is a very famous story. I don't think so. This is, um, I don't know if it's in your book, but it's a very famous story. What he did is, um, Firon, he made a spiral staircase and he asked uh, Janabi Musa al -Islam, he said, oh Musa, where is your Lord? Musa al -Islam said, my Lord is everywhere. And he said, yeah, but where does he live? He said, Orshi Ilahi. And then I said, okay. Then he asked his uh, workers to make a spiral wood, wooden uh, spiral case. The spiral case goes about that high, means, and then he went on the very high top stair and then he shot an arrow when he shot an arrow 
the bird was passing by and the, the arrow hit the bird and the blood came out. And then the, the Quran came down and said, Oh Musa, I just killed your God, Nazbullah. And then you can see why I'm telling you this story is to tell you what kind of mentality the Firon has. Allah showed him so many signs, but he doesn't want to pay heed. He doesn't want to listen. And he didn't come towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he still became, he still became arrogant. Uh, sorry, he, he stayed arrogant and very proud person. And then in the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Janab Musa alayhi salam. He said, Oh Musa, take Bani Israel out of Egypt. Okay? And then Janab Musa alayhi salam took uh, uh, Bani Israel towards Palestine for these days. When they were taken, they came towards the Red Sea because if you see the geographical, there is a Red Sea between Palestine and Egypt. So what happened is, Janabi Musa al Islam stood there and thinking, what should I do? There is a Red Sea, how are we going to cross it? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Musa, Oh Musa, put your staff on the sea. Janabi Musa al Islam put staff on the sea and there is a way, there is a path appeared on the sea. And Janabi Musa al Islam and Bani Israel crossed the Red Sea on that path. And now, because they are leaving the Egypt, and then Firon thinking, if they leave the Egypt, then I have no slaves. So he want to stop them. So Firon and his army at the back, they, they are chasing Janabi Musa al Islam and Bani Israel. So when they came and they saw Janabi Musa al Islam and, Jana, uh, and Bani Israel was passing the uh, Red Sea with that path, he ordered his soldiers and himself, and himself as well he was following Janabi Musa alayhi salam on the path Janabi Musa and Bani Israel safely crossed the sea but by the time when Firon and his soldiers came in the middle of the sea the path is dissolved and disappeared and that's the way there is the end of corrupt, arrogant, and evil king of that time. So, like I said before, Janabi Musa al-Islam's story is an interesting story. It's mentioned so many times in the Quran. And what we can learn from this story, if I, somebody asks me what I can learn from this story, I will learn, I learn one story. Uh, one, uh, sorry, I learned few things of this story. The first thing I can learn from this story is never be arrogant. Never think you are above than anybody else because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only power in this whole world and whole universe. He is the one who was before and he is the one who will therefore last for. He never, he will never die and he is our Lord. And after him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave some personalities power and hak and right. For example, Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, they are our master because Allah asks us to obey them. Okay, the other thing I learned from this story is never think you are clever than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah clearly says in Quran, they plan, but surely Allah is the best planner. So my dear students, what I would like you to do is to make sure whatever you do, you do for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to be a good Muslim. Okay, sorry, I think I press by mistake. One second. All right, then this is worksheet 1.19. If you have a book, please try to do so. Very, very easy. Like, for example, I'll come, uh, I'll do a couple of them with you. For example, the king of the Egypt during the time of Prophet Musa was Namrud, 
No, it's false. His name was Biron. Prophet Musa sister was Maryam. Yes, his sister name was Maryam. So you can read the information in the book and start filling these and they are very easy to do. Waste time. So let's quickly go through our quiz. Okay, let's quickly go through a quiz. I don't know what's wrong here. Can you all see me? Okay, now you can. Okay, I think by mistake, my I put my hand there. That's all. One second. Let me come back to this. Sorry about that. Okay, so what does cleansiness mean? Cleansiness means to be clean physically and spiritually. That's its important part. Which prophet said something about cleansiness? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. What does the word Tahara mean? Tahara means to be in a state of purity. What was the evil king in Prophet Moses' time? Firon was the evil king. How many plagues? Ten different plagues and contribute, um, did Prophet Moses guide? Prophet Moses guided the Israelites, Bani Israel. So my dear student, let me read what you are all saying because I've got four, Firon, and Bani Israel, son with me. Okay, well done, you answers right, Tahir Raza. So brief summary is, I will now give a brief summary. So the cleansiness is a two parts. Don't it, we can't compromise any part of the cleansiness. Physical uh, cleansiness is important as spiritual cleansiness, and spiritual cleansiness is an as an as important as physical cleansiness. We can't leave anyone out because these both are the part of the cleansiness. For example, there are two blocks of the cleansiness. Cleansiness, if we divide it into two halves, the one is spiritual, one is uh, physical, and you can't we have one. You can't be have just, I am very pure person. I don't lie. I don't lie, but I can't look after myself. I can't be physically clean. No, this is not right. And you can't be have a sparkly clean clothes on. Um, you have a shower every day, but your soul is cropped. So this is the two blocks. We have to join them together. Then it becomes a pure, um, the, the whole cleansiness. Okay. The other thing we learned about janab -e Musa al-Islam, we went through a chronological order of event in his lifetime. And I know I left a couple of the events because it's a very long story and it's a very interesting story as well. So um, research by yourself and write in a paragraph. I think I give, I give the challenge before. I said, write a brief summary about Janabi Musa alayhi salam. So please do so if you can. All right, then. Is the time for Dua Imam Zamana? So let's read Dua Imam Zamana.
All right, thank you everyone for listening. Let me read your quickly uh, messages. Thank you for the lesson, okay. All right, so thank you everyone for listening and participating in the class today. I was, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every each and every each minute of this lesson and I'm sure you did as well. And please listen what I said, try to be pure with your heart and with your soul and your physical appearance as well. Till next Friday, look after yourself, look after your family and remember me in your prayers. Okay, Allah Hafiz, take care.